Hi, my name's Amir. I'm the founder of OutSchool. Um, and I'm going to give you a quick introduction to what OutSchool is and who we are before diving into my main talk. OutSchool is a community marketplace for learning experiences. And what that means is that parents can come to our site at outschool.com and find learning experiences such as the physics of indoor skydiving. So this is a class where the kids get a physics lesson about forces um, around an experience in an indoor wind tunnel. And this is kind of um, typical of the fun combined with serious learning that we have. Another example is yoga and meditation. And this is actually an online class that's delivered by a teacher over video conference. And World War I history taught through stories of espionage and the technology around it. And all of these learning experiences are interactive, whether they're in person or online. And they're taught by a mixture of amateurs and professionals. And they're designed to help parents answer this question, where can I find the best learning experiences for my kids? And this is a question that you know, everyone is concerned about. Now, I want to talk a bit about why we decided to build this and our vision for the future of education. But I also think that, and if I have time, I'd like to cover some of the lessons that we can take from the world of tech, software development, and startups, and how we can apply those to transforming education. And the reason I want to talk about that is the world of startups is incredibly effective at um, creating change. And I think there's a lot of um, what, we, what we know from, from that world that we can apply in this world. And you know, myself and my co-founders, you know, we're relative newcomers to the world of education. We have a wealth of experience building consumer software products at companies like Airbnb, Clever, Google, and Amazon. And that's why I wanted to talk about that part. But let me, let me uh, first do the first part, which is talk about our vision for decentralized education. First, we need to ask, why is there the need for change? Why uh, do we want to imagine a future of a, an education system that's radically different for today? And I think the reason is that parents of young kids today, people my age, have seen how the world of work has changed. Now more than ever, we know that following the standard path is not a guarantee of career success or happiness. And in the next 20 years, we expect accelerating change, much of it driven by technology. Many of today's jobs will be gone, and new types of work will emerge. And success is going to come from kids developing new and differentiated skills as a result of actively pursuing their talents. And I know this from my own experience. I got the best education that it's possible to get in England with a selective school and then Cambridge University. But my formal education did not prepare me for my work in software and in founding companies. So we need to rethink how we prepare our kids for the world. And I'd like to propose a system of decentralized education where we connect families directly with teachers, professional and amateur, in person and online and without that interaction being governed by only one institution. It seems strange to think that the best way to acquire learning today is to be in a single place all day, every day, going through a curriculum planned years in advance. And I think that the decentralized model is better because learning can come from many different sources. And that includes professional teachers, but also includes amateurs and mentors. Teachers should be everyone's second job. And we also need to give our kids a more flexible schedule that gives time to play, explore, and discover. I taught myself to program because my parents bought me a computer to play games on. And then they found me a mentor outside of school when they realized my interest. And that, more than anything, has influenced my career. We also need to recognize that the most impactful learning experiences are going to be social and interactive. It's great that we can put content online. Um, and it's great that we can use technology in the classroom, but I don't think anyone wants to see a learning environment with kids mainly studying alone and staring at a screen. So the question is, can we really connect families directly with professional amateur teachers without a lot of pla forward planning in a fixed location? And I believe that we can do this because technology advances allow us to answer the questions about what, where, when, and who much more dynamically than was previously possible. If we can order a rideshare to arrive at our doorstep within minutes, it seems like we should be able to get a customized group learning experience and to get it within days rather than enrolling months in advance. So we're working on doing that today 
without school. We're enabling entrepreneurial educators to offer amazing group learning experiences. Here are a few examples. Matt is a grad student at UCSF studying stem cell biology. And uh, he offers anatomy and genetics classes throughout school. And the kids love it because he communicates his passion for the topics and doesn't talk down to them. We also work with trained teachers like Jessica, who offers an online creative writing class throughout school. And although it's online, it's interactive, not pre-recorded, and involves live sessions every week. And professional teachers love teaching through our platform because we tell them to teach the classes that inspire them the most, rather than teaching things to fit a standard or a test. And we also work with businesses like Homeroom Education, who have a variety of teachers offering topics like the World War I history class I showed before, commuter animation, and economics. And our school enables all these, kind of, uh, all these kinds of entrepreneurial teachers reach parents directly. What's exciting about this is that the more classes that we're able to offer direct to parents, the more parents come on board because people value variety. Kids' interests change with time and that everyone's different. And this brings more teachers on board as their classes become financially viable. And so what we think is that by offering more classes and seeing these network effects, we can really create a completely new distributed and decentralized model, model for education. Now, um, if you like the sound of decentralized education, I think the things that we can do today to make this happen are to really support entrepreneurial teachers delivering courses um, and experiences outside of regular school. And you know, the things that we can do today are to take a risk on their classes when they're just starting out. And they don't necessarily have their own physical space to be able to offer these classes. Booking rooms can be tough. So if you have a space that they can use, offer it to them and help them get the word out. OK, so I'm down to like 50 seconds. So I'll have to be very, very quick in um, the lessons uh, from Startup Supply to Education. Um, the first one I'd like to, like to say is start small. I think too often we see so many problems and opportunities in education that you know, we try and tackle everything at once. And you know, startups um, know that you have to start in a very, very small way in order to make anything happen. And action is far more important than big plans. The second part is to accept failure and to absorb it. I think it was uh, Winston Churchill who said that um, uh, you know, uh, success is like going from one failure to the other without, without having disastrous consequences. And you know, the, the, the startup journey or, and the journey of any kind of change doesn't look like the top line where you just go conveniently from A to B, or even like the middle line where you, know, you kind of wiggle around a bit. It's a, it, the change is a story of many, many different attempts at um, you know, achieving a goal and then doubling down on success. So I'm out of time, um, but thank you so much. Uh, thanks for having me.